folks. Welcome back to Jerome B. Farm and Homestead. So uh, this is our first nice day after the big storm and I uh, wanted to show you uh, something I did on this hive that uh, I should not have done and these bees survived so far in spite of uh, my mistake. So this is hive number 29 out of 30. Number 30 right there is vacant. I have several vacant hives this year. I think there's seven, maybe six uh, total. Uh, hives that did not uh, make it or I had to combine going into the winter. So uh, this hive here is one I started last year. Uh, it's a new hive and it had to get all, built all the way up through the year such that it could survive winter. So I had to feed it a lot. So what mistake did I make? Well, if you look on this hive, I forgot and left the liquid feeder on it because I was feeding it a lot and it's kind of over here by itself it doesn't get a lot of attention and uh, I forgot and left this thing on here so this is uh, one of the tools I use to uh, boost a hive up going into winter so it's just you just fill it up with liquid the bees come up in here and they can't they can uh, stay above the liquid and they don't drown and they can't get into the liquid side so they go up and down on this ladder thing inside of the screen and that's how they get their feed so it's just uh, sugar water is what you put in there so let's get that off of there so why is it bad to leave this on here so heat goes up right when it gets really cold out, like we just had this cold snap, uh, 10 days below freezing in a row, uh, four days below zero. Heat goes up. The, the bees are going to form like a basketball sized cluster in the middle of this, uh, covering those frames in that small area. And they just bind up tight into a ball and they, they move their muscles and that's how they stay warm. And they eat the honey right where they're at. And, that's, and that gives them energy to move their muscles to stay warm. If they run out of honey uh, in that spot and they can't move for a few days, they can actually starve to death with honey right next to them because it's too cold for them to move. So if you put a big thing that's a big dead airspace above them, their heat goes up and they lose it. So it's not completely dead air, but it's not insulated. So, well, it is dead air, but it's not insulated at all. It's just a thin layer of plastic and there's holes all in that so their warmth could come right up through here and it, and escape out here. So I'm really surprised these bees made it. And this hive weighs nothing. Uh, it's basically empty. There's no honey left in here at all. So we got to get them some food. And when it's cold, you don't want to give them liquid. So we're going to get this off of here. Okay, so here's what I'm seeing. Get these little stragglers out. So in the hives that I just opened earlier, they had an area of bees about half the size of the hive. So look, at, look how small of a cluster we see here. It's about that big for, for two, two deep boxes. So ideally, I'd want to see about this many bees. I see this many bees. So they have struggled. Uh, these are beetle traps. This hive's in the shade. They have more trouble with beetles than the others. So they're out of food. We're going to get them some food. I have this uh, feeder from last year that didn't get all eight of a... Uh, sugar this is a sugar feeder i'm just going to tap these bees so they go down so this will give them uh, some food uh, in substitute of honey uh, to keep these bees alive and i got to go get an inner cover for them i guess i could just put this on here for now now let me go find one. OK, 
Okay, got us an inner cover to get this covered up. So if you notice on this uh, sugar feeder, it's also got a vent hole right there. And it has a little piece of, uh, of uh, screen over it. So robber bees can't come and steal that sugar if you happen to put this on in the fall. Fall is a uh, prime time for when bees like to rob each other out. Okay. Okay, hopefully we got these bees set. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, they didn't have a big cluster to start with going into winter, and that's what they have, or if they've had a lot of die off. I don't see a lot of dead bees out here, but uh, it's a little early for them to start hauling uh, bunches of dead bees out and they may not have enough population to take care of it so uh, when it warms up good uh, above 50 degrees uh, we'll try and get in here and see if there's clumps of dead bees uh, when you have clumps of dead bees that the hive isn't strong enough to take care of they'll just sit there and rot and then it attracts pests maggots uh, all kinds of things and it's it's disgusting and i've had that happen a couple years ago uh, there's a video if you check Two years ago, it's hive number nine, and the title is, Can I Save This Smelly, Stinky, Rotten, Disgusting Hive? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I actually had that happen, and that hive came back, and uh, actually was a good hive later on, but uh, man, it almost died. It was that bad. So uh, that could be going on in any of these hives that may have had a lot of die off from the cold. So anyway, that's the end of the video. Uh, don't uh, leave your feeders on over winter. That's, uh, that's not, not a good thing. So uh, that may be one reason these bees have such a small population. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you would and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We'll catch you on the next beekeeping video. Y'all take care.